Thank you. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> so, look at that. Real humans again. I'm not just talking to a camera for once. That's great. Um, so, just before we get started, I'd like to do a couple of polls. And that's pretty interactive. So, uh, instead of expecting you to raise your hands, I want everyone to raise your hands right now. So far, so good. No, keep them raised. Keep them raised. You can do it. Um, so, if this is your f uh, first Demo Days event, you can take your hand down. Ah, a couple of people. All right, cool. Hands up again. Thank you. And the people who have uh, been here for a long time, you're going to have a, a strained arm at the end, but uh, bear with me. All right, if you've heard about this before, camps, please take your hands down. Okay, so everyone who has their hands up have not heard about this before. Awesome, that's, uh, that's great, you can take your hands down. That's, uh, that's some good news. That means uh, I'm going to teach you something new today. Um, because to me, uh, camps is kind of the first thing I think of when I think of DevOps. Um, uh, and why is that? It really comes down to um, being the enabling force inside your organization to really enable, enable DevOps and enable your whole organization to work with DevOps. Um, so let's get this out of the way first. What the fuck does it mean? The C is for culture, the A is for automation, M is for measurement, and S is for sharing. So that, uh, that, that takes care of that little part. Um, so the goal of this talk really is to give you uh, some con the, to make these concepts more concrete so that you can uh, apply them to your everyday work. Um, it might be a little bit heavy on the culture side for today, but um, to me, it really is the most important part. Uh, you kind of have to tackle the culture part before you can get uh, the full value of all the other uh, parts of it. So first, a little bit about me. Um, this is the part where I have to sell myself as to why you have to listen to me and... Uh, take me seriously. Um, I am actually Danish, so it's funny to be back in my own uh, hometown, so to say. I used to study here as a musician a long time ago. Uh, it's about 12 years ago now, I think. I moved to Amsterdam, but um, yeah, before that, I was a musician here in, in Aarhus uh, playing uh, jazz in order to support myself. So obviously, I had to come up with a different career choice because that wasn't very viable. Um, <clears throat> so I kind of moved to Amsterdam, got into IT just through working at a service desk, uh, moved on to this admin work, um, and around 2012, 2013, this new concept of DevOps kind of appeared out of nowhere. Um, and I thought, hey, that sounds pretty cool. That's uh, kind of what I'm interested in anyway. So, you know, you just have to automate the shit out of everything, and uh, life is good. Um, Next to that, uh, after the kind of discovering it, I figured out, okay, maybe the community part is uh, quite interesting. So I got involved with DevOps Days in Amsterdam. Uh, and I've been there for uh, since 2014. And we're actually having our 10th anniversary this year. Uh, so if you want to have an excuse to go to Amsterdam this summer and uh, hang out, then uh, come to me and I'll get you a bit of a discount. We have our own beer. So that's a pretty big seller. We also have talks and open spaces and all that stuff, but we also make our own beer called DevHops. So uh, um, I work as an independent hands-on consultant. I, I, I'm not, I don't like calling myself a consultant because it sounds like I'm just, well, doing this, like making presentations, but I actually do hands-on engineering as well. Um, I currently work for a company called Aholt. Uh, it's probably not very, known here, but it's a company where about 400,000 people work in. Um, it's a pretty big worldwide uh, retail company, so supermarket chains in the Netherlands, Belgium, the US, and Czechoslovakia, and all over Europe, essentially. Um, I head up uh, the cloud SRE kind of initiatives there as a technical product owner. And uh, the things we really focus on there is actually Things like the developer experience and the productivity engineering, like uh, Justin talked about earlier today. So, 
Yeah, I thought I was going to tell you something new about that, but uh, that was already covered, so super cool. Anyway, so to get back on the, the topic, because this is a lot more interesting than me, trust me, um, we have to do a bit of time traveling. So uh, climb on board with the cat, and uh, let's see where it, where it goes. We have to go back to 2010, so that's like the, the second year of DevOps, the official DevOps, I guess you could say, to the DevOps days in the Mountain Valley. Uh, Mountain Valley is essentially the Silicon Valley um, DevOps stage, you could say. So these were two of the organizers there, uh, John Willis and Damon Edwards. You might have seen them before uh, or heard about them before. Um, but essentially after the conference, they sat down together uh, doing their, um, their DevOps podcast, the DevOps Cafe. It's no longer alive. They tried rebooting it a couple of times, but they're busy with other things. Um, but back then, that was the hippest thing to listen to. And they kind of tried to nail down exactly what were the themes of the conference. So what are the real themes of DevOps? So uh, culture was the big f first thing they were talking about. So the, the, the C in camps, right? Um, so they saw this by people having uh, wanting to have the same outcomes and wanting to move in the same direction, so with a shared vision. And the companies who were the front runners in this were yeah, really demonstrating that uh, you needed this kind of mentality to, 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 uh, to work there. Uh, and they showed that through sharing their success stories, of course. Um, next to that, they were talking about automation. Back then, it was well, probably uh, Ops Code and Puppet, or Chef, it was later, as it was later called. Um, then measurement. Back then, was really surrounding things like monitoring uh, and just getting your alerts to work and those kind of things. So really tool, tool heavy. Uh, there was no ob observability ideas at this point, so it was really just thinking of how can I get Nagus to stop sucking, uh, or how can I get some other tool like Sabix or something that sucks a little bit less, but still sucks like hell. Um, the measurement part, um, yeah, that was uh, Nagus and Sabix indeed, uh, and then sharing. So sharing was, of course, the whole uh, conference, essentially. Everyone came there with the same ideas or wanting to hone in on the same ideas through sharing, through, um, um, through these presentations, through uh, open spaces, which we'll cover uh, in a bit, and you have to uh, attend in a bit as well. So that's kind of where we came from. And where are we now then? 12 years later, right? Uh, I spoke with John uh, a little bit before, well, not before this presentation, but before I originally made this presentation about it to kind of pick his brain on it. Uh, John works at Red Hat. Uh, he helps out companies with kind of, who's kind of struggling with all these things and really getting DevOps right, uh, just to see if it's still a relevant thing. And uh, he said, yes, it is. It's still very relevant. Um, even before it was relevant in DevOps, you saw the, these patterns still being needed uh, in um, manufacturing or, you know, other styles of companies, not just in software development or um, yeah, technology companies. So I'm going to do a couple of deep dives on yeah, every, every part of this acronym. So starting with culture. So it's, this is really the most important thing. Unfortunately, it's also the hardest thing uh, to get right. And more importantly, it's the hardest thing to change. You have to be brutally honest with not just yourself, but uh, each other, and really challenge each other constantly to see, are we still aligned on, on this, while still remaining empathic, right? You, you can't just be an asshole and say, you're not doing this the way I want it, so you have to kind of find some shared, shared ground there, right? So, kind of build on this quote by, by Simon Sinek, um, and make it a little bit more tangible for people who work in DevOps. Um, it's really about creating this shared understanding between developers and people who work in operations. But even more so, it's, it's uh, your entire organization, right? It's not just about developers and operations. 
some people even explicitly mention security now, so you call it DevSecOps. But you also have the business part of things, so it's biz dev sec ops. And then you have marketing, where do they come up in it? So it's really just, just stick to calling it DevOps, and everything else is kind of implicitly included. So it's about your whole organization that needs to be included in this. Um, so the things I want to focus on for culture is uh, these issues we're running into aren't really new. Uh, there's already been some great management consultants uh, who've kind of dived into this before, and I recommend reading uh, pretty much anything these guys wrote. Uh, they have like my stamp of approval, so if they're good enough for me, I guess they're good enough for everyone. Uh, these management consultants have a tendency to come up with uh, having a certain amount of steps, and then you're done. So, Deming, I, th I believe it's 14, uh, 14 points, Peter Senge has his five uh, disciplines, and John Carter has eight steps. So if you want to be a management consultant, you have to split it out into a tangible amount of steps you can follow. For today, we're going to stick to the guy in the middle, Peter Senge, and uh, kind of dive into his five uh, disciplines that he, he talks about. So it really is about um, creating an organization that's learning continuously, uh, and how you do that. And that's not easy. Um, so Senge published a book in, I think it was 1990 or so, that is called uh, these uh, five disciplines, or the fifth discipline, I think it's actually called. Um, and it focuses on things like group problem solving. And uh, really, um, the key part of all this is the, the systems thinking part. Uh, so to those unfamiliar with it, it is where you try to look at things from uh, yeah, a more holistic uh, point of view, essentially. Uh, I'll get into that a little bit more. Uh, I'll just go through the, these different parts, at least. Uh, I actually have notes on this, so I'm super prepared. So even though you can do all these kind of things in a, in a random order, it's not entirely random anyway. Uh, you should kind of start with a shared vision. But, but as soon as someone says shared vision, you uh, immediately go to uh, some kind of uh, CEO who has uh, paid a management consultancy company to come up with like a simple statement that he could say once a year, and then he can go off stage, and uh, everyone will just memorize that, right? And then uh, the culture is fixed. Uh, unfortunately, that doesn't work. Um, it needs to be an authentic thing that people can really relate to. Um, it's, you, you need to have so much buy-in that people will see it as the, the main purpose of their, of their work, essentially. Um, Simon Sinek also talks about the ideas of infinite games versus finite games. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that, but um, for culture, it really is an infinite game. So an infinite game is... Uh, I forgot the complete definition of it, but it's essentially where uh, the players involved in it make their own rules, and it's a never-ending game, essentially. It's a continuous game where there's no winners or losers. You just keep playing it. Um, all right, so mental models, which is the next step over here. Um, this is where you want to kind of reality check yourself. So really be conscious of your own biases and check your own beliefs that you're not going into things with a closed mind. Um, and I think it really puts an emphasis on focusing on, uh, on openness. So really be honest with each other and don't try to play political games in order to make short-term victories for yourself. Like focus on the big picture and the long-term uh, gains that you can make. Uh, team learning. <clears throat> this is stuff that we, a couple of people over covered a little bit, where you want to do some, uh, yeah, kind of work on your on your on your, um, on your on your teamwork, and not just that, but also use your teams to to teach each other, right? So you would, uh, for us, that would be stuff like uh, pair programming, 
uh, creating a DevOps dojo inside your company, uh, doing internal um, DevRel, for example, uh, is one of the newer things you could do. So a super important step for sure. And then uh, the last thing in the middle, uh, system thinking. This is kind of what implements the four other disciplines. Um, it's where you need to take a step back and really look at it from a, uh, have a more of a holistic viewpoint, so really see it from a, the big picture. And Stenka likes to use the elephant metaphor, where that if you have an elephant and you cut it into two, you don't really have two elephants, right? That's not how it works. You still have just two parts of one elephant. So you have to view things as an entire system. So one part of the elephant would be developers. The other part of the elephant would be ops. They still need to be together it's in order to have a functioning company, right? It's not, they can't uh, survive on their own. Ah, good. The boring culture part is done. Let's move on to the fun stuff, right? Um, so, of course, automation is, uh, is key to DevOps. It, it really is. That's where all the daily work really goes into, right? So, um, but I still see the misconception uh, going around that DevOps really is just about automating things. And that's not really enough. Um, automating just for the automation's sake is uh, really counterproductive and can be really invel can can really cause the opposite effect of just creating value in your teams. Um, that's why the, you need the boring culture pit first to really look at your entire system to see what part do we need to automate. Um, so the past, of course, was about. Uh, having servers stuck in a rack, and in there you would automate stuff with Bash uh, if you were lucky, or you would um, SSH to them and run some scripts on there. Uh, luckily, these days, we're doing things uh, differently. So we have clouds, right? So we can, we can just spin up stuff with uh, infrastructure as code tools like Terraform or Pulumi or whatever flows your boat. Um, you can even just use one of the Vendor native uh, SDKs and just use a, a Turing complete language instead. Um, of course, having GitOps in mind when doing this so you don't have to uh, yeah, run stuff from, from your own systems. Uh, even now, if we go a little bit into the, f if we just dip our toes into, into the future, I also see custom resource definitions in Kubernetes really being a, a powerful tool, especially if you want to really enable developers to do their own thing. Um, that's, of course, really if you're heavily invested into uh, Kubernetes. I still really like Bash, though. It works really well. Uh, measurement. So, like I said, measurement back in the day was really focused on the tooling stuff. So, really just how do I get Nagus to scale? Uh, which, spoiler alert, it didn't. Um, but, like Justin also mentioned this morning, like measuring how you work and how effective you are is equally important to just your, uh, how your servers are doing, right? Um, so just to build a bit on, on what we were, uh, yeah, maybe just to stick to the developer experience part, like um, also try to uh, create your own metrics like uh, customer effort success scores. Um, so just have a developer uh, rate his workflow when, as soon as he's done with it. Just have him press a happy smiley or a sad smiley, depending on how good it is. And next to that, uh, metrics that are important inside DevOps are uh, the metrics from Dora. Uh, not sure if you're familiar with those, the DevOps Research Institute at, at Google. Um, essentially, those metrics are about the uh, deployment frequency, uh, lead time for changes, uh, mean time to restore service, and your change failure rates. So if you manage to, to keep those well alive, you're doing pretty well. Um, sharing. That's kind of what we're doing today, right? So uh, I'm here on stage telling you a, a little bit about some stuff. Um, and later today, the more important part uh, is coming up is uh, open spaces. 
I think what you should try and do is learn from these open spaces that you'll be doing this afternoon and try to get the yeah, value out of them. Really, really see how you can use them in your own companies as well. I remember at my own first DevOps days, I thought the idea of open spaces was uh, well, either terrifying or just it's not going to bring any value to me. Um, but it turned out to be the best part of it. Like I usually even avoid listening to boring talks like mine and just go for the open spaces. Uh, but of course, you should stay for my talk. Uh, it's great. Um, I promised the organizers just to talk a little bit about open spaces, actually, just to give a brief introduction into how it works. So I'll try to do that. So if they follow the normal convention, everyone is allowed to bring up a subject they want to talk about. So it's just whatever interests you, either through what you've heard at a conference or yeah, what you've been struggling with at, at work, in your teams, if you just want to talk about a certain technology. Any suggestion is welcome. If you want to talk about uh, brewing your own beer, that's also welcome. Uh, all that you just put on post-it notes and throw them on a board somewhere. Uh, one, once that suggestion round is done, you go up and you essentially dot vote the talks you want to talk about or you, you want to participate in. Then the organizers take uh, a few minutes to pick out the most popular ones and then assign them to these different areas where people now are sitting, uh, where you'll sit in a big circle. And it's essentially quite simple. You vote with your feet after that. So if it's interesting, you keep your feet still and you, sit, you stay seated. As long as it doesn't bring any value to you or you're not delivering any value, you just get up and you walk somewhere else. And that's without judgment. You can just leave if it's not, uh, if it's not good. Um, and then you do that a couple of times. Um, so to end this up, I wanted to talk about this, um, some concepts from, from this book, The Phoenix Project. Uh, hands up if you've read it. Very good. To all those who didn't read it, please ask your neighbor to borrow it to you, because I think it's still a mandatory read uh, if you're in DevOps at the moment. Uh, the thing I noticed when, while reading this book was that it really fits uh, on top of CAMS as well, um, which I will show you soon through the magic of my next slide. Um, but essentially, I'll, I'll just describe these, uh, these, these three ways first. Uh, so the first one, create flow, it really is about the systems thinking thing that I, that I uh, described just before. Uh, second one, feedback loops, is technically the, this principle from uh, Toyota, which they said to all their employees, which is like improving your daily work is more important than your daily work. So always seeking this improvement to your daily work is more important than just working. So this, this means that this is, this is a company where you really put culture first, right? It's, we don't really care about this empty value that you deliver. It, it matters about improving your quality. And uh, the third way is uh, welcoming failure. So it's okay to take risks, it's okay to experiment, as long as you learn from it. So basically put it through the feedback loop. So this is how it kind of maps out. <clears throat> the third way uh, kind of maps on top of sharing and culture. Just this continuous experimentation, the risk taking, and the continuous learning. Uh, if you see something going wrong, you share it, uh, and you don't hide your mistakes. You, you lift them, and you learn from them, and you improve them. The first way is the automation bit. Um, but of course, you take the entire system into mind. Uh, you keep the entire system in mind. You don't just blindly automate things inside your own uh, elephant half. And the second way is the measurement part, where you create these different feedback loops and put them back into experiments so that you really understand what's important to work on. So that brings us to the conclusion of what's next. So like, like I talked with John about, CAMS is uh, just as relevant as always. Um, what we see with DevOps is that already in 2019, we kind of crossed the, the path of, um, or across the chasm in terms of adoption. So 
we're, we're even now into like the late majority of adopt adopters and even the laggards are starting to get on. Um, so I think to safeguard our culture, it's important that we keep having this conversation about why culture is important. Um, automation is, of course, <coughs> has completely taken off in terms of, uh, of maturity. Uh, I think the next big step is really properly uh, automating security. Uh, I think it's still a bit of golf-driven decision-making when it comes to these security tools. So essentially, your CTO goes out on the golf course and he says, hey, I have a security tool, all right, we'll use that one. So it's not really engineering driven. So they might say that they want to start shifting stuff left, but it's, uh, yeah, if, if as an engineer you're not picking your tools, then uh, you don't really have a chance. Um, so it also means including security into these things a lot more, uh, be it through being explicit by calling it DevSecOps or simply just by, yeah, talking to each other and just still call it DevOps. It doesn't really matter. Um, in measurement, I think the big thing is uh, chaos engineering. I think if you use chaos engineering, you can kind of create these experiments that uh, if you have a very stable system and it never crashes, yeah, how are you going to deal with it when it finally does crash? Uh, and how do, you, how do you notice it? And are you even measuring the right things? Um, and then sharing, I think, um, like internal DevRel roles is on the rise. You certainly see that. And I think that's also uh, tying into what Justin, for example, also talked about earlier about the uh, yeah, engineering productivity uh, or productivity engineering, essentially. That's where we're, we're heading towards. I really think that is the next big thing when it comes to uh, ways of sharing. And. That's it. A big round of applause for, for Thomas.